On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, Kevin Jeffries and I are fishing the very shallow patch reefs off North Key Largo in the Florida Keys. We'll be catching hogfish. You ever seen a hogfish take drag like that, George? Whoa, what a hog. World class hog. Got on this time, now was that the plug? Mutton snapper. Tell you what, you got, the, you got this figured out, the mutton. Red gag groupers. Big grouper. Join us on this exciting rod bending adventure. Nice one. George Pulveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. Key Largo has always been a very special place for me. I spent a ton of time down here fishing the offshore waters and the reefs. A very short drive from Miami or Fort Lauderdale and you could be here within an hour to maybe an hour and a half. And in my case, on this particular trip, I trailered the Mark VI and I ended up at the Caribbean Club, which is a pretty decent launching ramp for large boats. And here I met up with Captain Kevin Jeffries. Uh, Kevin is a remarkable guy and he represents what I like to call one of these new generation Florida Keys guides. I grew up in a small town in, in Western Canada, in Saskatchewan on the farm and uh, in, uh, in the minus 30 winters and uh, you know, I ended up in Key Largo. Everybody's got a story how they got here, I guess. I came on vacation and never went home. Just last year, I got together with Kevin to do one of his specialties, which was nighttime Kubera snapper fishing off northern Key Largo. It's a tedious kind of fishing that you're doing it at night. You're dropping down live lobsters and you're catching these brute snapper at anywhere from 45 to 56 pounds on our particular trip. Extreme fishing and it's a lot of fun. However, one of Kevin's other specialties is fishing the patch reefs off northern Key Largo. And one hook that he has going for him, yes, pun intended, is that he specializes in catching hogfish, otherwise called hog snapper, on rod and reel. So I'm talking to Kevin as we're heading out. I'm saying, okay, we're looking at the big Simrad map of my machine. And I said, okay, where are we going in here? As we got into our, uh, onto our first uh, patch reef, shallow patch reef, it was really shallow. Our first one, I want to say we were in 10 or 12 feet, if I remember right. And just to see these things, uh, on your Simrad machine coming up, you can just tell the hard bottom and how high up the sea fans are. And what was a really unique perspective is a Simrad 3D structure scan. And that is basically side imaging where you can shoot off both the port and starboard side of your boat and see what's off to the sides of your vessel in 3D imaging. So you could actually see the tops, the crevices, uh, the high points, the low points of both sides of the vessels and they get a view of these rock piles from a 3D side scanning perspective is really unique too. Some really wild bottom in here and to, to see it in this shallow and to see the types of fish and fishing they have to offer, again, it's a trait that's uh, pretty much unique to uh, the northern Key Largo area. You know, we're trying to anchor up in front of that patch, you know, and position the boat on the edge of it so that we can, uh, you know, try to use uh, chums or, or attractants to bring those fish over to the edge of that patch and uh, target them mostly with shrimp and, uh, and uh, you know, ballyhoos and some, and some uh, live pilchards. And, and again, just an absolutely gorgeous day. We're out here and next thing you know, I feel a thump on my live pilchard, another thump, and finally the rod tip just bends all the way down. I wind to set the circle hook. And grouper. grouper. Are these reds on these patches uh, year round too, or do you see them more prominent during certain months? Uh, definitely uh, more prominent uh, in the winter time, but at the same time, they're here year round. Thirteen feet of water. No need to uh, purge them. They're come, going down fine. Yeah. This feels like a pretty good fish. <laughs> Whoa! Good turn. Good turn. Think he's out of the danger of the patches where we're at right now? Or he you... should be. Okay, I'm gonna put this here for you. If you need a net, let me know. Just in case. Should be a good fish, George. Oh, that. Nah. Grouper. All right. Nice, Kevin. High reef grouper for you. 
That's reef red. Jig's out of there. It's one of the many patch-free species down here, huh? Many of them out here. Lots of them. Lots of hogs, lots of snappers, lots of groupers. There he goes. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Simrad and the revolutionary new Halo Radar. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. We're back at anchor near the shallow patch reefs off North Key Largo in the Florida Keys. I'm with Captain Kevin Jeffries. Why pilchard in the bottom on a knocker rig? Kevin, Need a hand? do what we have. Now I'm doing good so far. There we go, red grouper. Beautiful, coming on I in. Met him. Yeah, I, I got him. Yeah. Good. Love the way that they, they hit, and I was right on the edge of that patch when that thing hit. Started making a beeline, crank it down, and just trying to turn them. I'll tell you, the mainstay group are all the patches, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, this is our big hog. All right. It's not a giant, but it's a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to lift him in. There you go, Kevin. There's your hogfish. There it is, a nice one. Pretty colors. An oddly shaped or type of fish. And I always said that the right in this portion here, it somewhat resembles a grunt, doesn't it? It does. You know, it's got the, the snout a little bit like a grunt and, and the colors a bit like a grunt. Um, you know, it's a, it's a unique fish in, in that, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, call it a hog snapper. It's not really a snapper, it's a wrasse. Right. Which is a, is a quite a bit less common fish than the snapper, and that's a that's a really nice specimen, probably 16 inches or 17 inches in that range. Whole keeper. But yeah, I only got to be 12 now. They're, they're, as I was telling you before, the reg, yeah, regulations are uh, forecast to change January 1st. Right now, they only got to be 12 inches. They're going to go to 16, but this one would be easily make 16, no problem. We had all light tackle. Kevin said, "Don't even bring any of the heavy stuff. This is fun fishing. It's relaxing fishing." So our outfits happen to be the new Penn Slammer 3 spinners, 3500 and 4500. I wanted to go more for the groupers and maybe the muttons, and I would bait with live pilchers. Then Kevin took another outfit, and then he rigged a ballyhoo plug that he would use to try to hit some of these groupers or the muttons. Kevin was trying to target hogfish using shrimp, and it's pretty much simple fishing in that you would cast out behind the boat, with a knocker rig, let the light filter go down to the bottom, and he would do the same thing with the, either the jig or the uh, the hook with a live shrimp, trying to target the hog snapper. He got on this time. That was that the plug? Yeah, is it value nope. plug? No, nope, this is shrimp again. On the shrimp. This one's a little lazier. Mutton snapper again. Tell you what, you got the you got this figured out. The mutton. Juvenile mutton. Hatch reef mutton. And there's a hook right there. I could work that out, I believe. There we go. Hold on to that. Yep. That's good. Small mutton. You were saying that you believe that these muttons are going to be your key fish with these patches here, huh? Yeah, because of the regulation. On going on hogfish. Yeah, the regulations they're starting to put, push forward for on the hogfish. Right. I feel like it, it's going to be one of our, you know, probably our primary species in the future. Uh, in this type of fishing in this shallow, you know, in this shallow patch reefs. So it's imperative to try and uh, preserve them as much as we can as well. There you go, George. Yeah, me too, baby. And this thing was a slugfish right in that rock. I, I, I can't believe I actually got him out. You see me hold me up twice on the yeah. initial hookup. Me too, George. You on now? Yep. Come on, I'll give you a little real estate here. Red grouper. Oh, look at this black grouper. Black, juvenile black. And you got a, a little mutton. mutton. Patch reef variety. <laughs> yeah. Pretty darn good. Most trips, our, our snapper bite is more active than our grouper bite. And lots of days, our, our hogfish bite is more active than our grouper bite. Uh, I feel like it was probably our moon phase. We're getting close to that full moon. Those grouper are kind of the, they're, I don't want to say they're the boss of the reach. And, and uh, if they decide they're going to eat, they'll eat first. <laughs> Add to the variety here. Some more of that variety we talk <laughs> about on these shallow patch reefs. And off he goes. Oh, 
I had something else. You were hooked up. <laughs> this one locked me in twice. Yeah, right on the start. He, he I didn't you. think I was going to get him out of there. <laughs> good, uh, that was good on angling, George, because yes, he got into something there immediately. You got him pulled <laughs> off it. You got into something else again right after. You got him pulled off twice. Oh, it's so funny because you come out with a mentality we're in 13 feet of water. And, you know, we're used to the deeper stuff, the bigger groupers and all that. What in 13 feet of water is going to give me any kind of a challenge? And you get so many fish, and uh, we're not using a style to I mean, tackle or the lightest either. It's a right, it's good middle of the road tackle. 20 yeah. pound braid and, and uh, good challenge on it. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing proudly brought to you by ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Rapala, your best shot at a world record. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Papa's Pilar, a room inspired by possibly the world's greatest adventurer. Key Largo has a, a wide variety of, of uh, things to do for people. It's just probably why it's, it's, it's a great tourist destination. There's, there's a lot to do here. Uh, it's actually the, the dive capital of the world. There's, I don't know, hundreds of sites uh, in the 35 foot range where, where people come to dive and, and snorkel. Then you have John Pennycamp Coral Reef State Park. Jump aboard one of their dive boats, go out to some of these coral heads and just snorkel around and see some incredible sights in protected areas. And some of the sights there will really uh, surprise you. If uh, looking down and see some of these big barracuda and every now and then you look and you'll see a shark and here you are snorkeling around in an environment like that. It's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we launched uh, George's boat at the Caribbean Club in Key Largo. Maybe one of the oldest, or maybe the oldest, uh, liquor licenses in Monroe County. It's uh, it's been there forever. This is going back to Humphrey Bogart era. Speaking of movies, um, Key Largo, it's uh, it was definitely a favorite of Humphrey Bogarts. And over by the Holiday Inn, they had the African Queen, which was used in Humphrey Bogart's movie. Ocean Point Suites of Key Largo is a place we stay a lot at. What I like most about Ocean Point Suites is that it's angler friendly. And if you have a boat that's say 25 feet and less, they have a beautiful ramp on site and they have their own set of docks that you can tie off to. They have on-site trailer storage. Once you launch, whether you keep your boat here or someplace else, bring your trailer back. Plenty of spaces to park your trailer and not have to worry about it. Beautifully appointed accommodations and also a breathtaking view of overlooking the mangroves and the Atlantic Ocean on the backside. So if you want to know why I stay at Ocean Point Suites, again, going back to the angler-friendly nature, check this place out. Well, Kevin hooks up to something good this time, and I see that line going back towards the patches. I thought that was a run of a mutt right there, Chief. I'm hoping. If I had a bet. Either that or a cuda grab something. That's gonna maybe be a mutt. But once you got it over that green open water, probably about 20 feet away from patches, I knew that unless the hook pulled or something weird happened, that we're gonna see this fish. Oh my God, look at it, keep him down nice. there. Keep him down there. Big grouper. Big Hang on, I'll get gag. the net, maybe. I'll get the net. When we looked down there, it was a beauty of a gag grouper. Grabbed the net, slid it in there. What a beautiful prize. Yet another fish that we're gonna take home on the Mark 6. Nice one. <laughs> nice one, guys. It's funny, I just, cr I just cranked the drag down because I was like, I think there's got to be a bigger one here. And I yeah, we uh, we obviously caught a, a wide variety of groupers. We caught mostly reds. I think we caught a bunch of reds. I don't know. I hate to put a number on it. Uh, we only caught one gag. That was the, the one there. That was, that was a great one. I actually caught him on the, probably the biggest shrimp in the bag. It's actually uncommon that I run the biggest shrimp in the bag. I usually am running smaller baits, attracting the hogfish. A lot of times those smaller baits are better. Um, but we had a we had a good bite going there, and, and it seemed to be you know the bulk of them were bigger fish, and uh, I was digging through the bag looking for the biggest shrimp possible, and and, uh, and it was effective uh, at, that, at that especially that one spot and uh, that one patch reef. Look at this thing. Yeah, that's a beauty. That's a good one here in these shallow patches. We're in about 25 feet. I just felt like we had some bigger fish coming around, so I tightened the drag down and got lucky. Got him stopped before he got in the patch, and uh, he was still pulling drag even here at the boat on a, on a real tight drag. We'll get it out. If not, let I'm him have it. I'm cut him right here. Yeah, let him have it. That line is all the way frayed up too. I mean, he's coming home for dinner. However, we looked at him. We dip him out here. I'm going to measure him up. And the gag grouper is a, a pretty unique fish in that in the Florida Keys, it almost takes up the same kind of habitat as a snookwood. You find these uh, during the winter. They'll come in and get under these mangroves. 
uh, the, without a doubt, on the Rex and the Gulf. But on the Atlantic side, it seems that they stop around these shallow patch reefs. And then if you catch them beyond that, it, it's almost like a rarity. I said it once, I'll say it again. When it comes to different types of grouper, the gag grouper, in my opinion, is one of the finest eating groupers around. Georgia's Tackle Locker. Mercury's new active trim is an integrated GPS, speed-based, automatic engine trim system. It takes the fine-tuning chores away from the boat operator. Here's how it works. Active trim continually adjusts engine trim based on changes in boat speed with the goal of improving overall performance, ease of operation, and fuel economy. No knowledge of trimming an engine is needed to take advantage of active trim. On my Mark 6, and with active trim engaged, as I continue to throttle up my outboards, they'll trim up and hold at their most responsive and efficient attitude. As I throttle back, the outboards will trim down. Going into a turn, active trim will trim in the outboards to ensure the ultimate bite. And powering up coming out of a turn, the outboards will begin trimming out to help dial in a quick and fuel efficient ride. Active trim is compatible with Mercury four-stroke outboards from 40 horsepower on up. Mercury SmartCraft capable two-stroke outboards and Mercury SmartCraft capable gas and diesel stern drive engines with digital trim senders. Mercury Performance Stats, Florida Keys. Seas, two feet. Power, triple 350 horsepower Mercury Verano outboards. Total miles traveled, 32. Speed, 42 miles per hour. Total fuel burned, 26 gallons. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing, proudly brought to you by Suffix, always use the best line. Pen, let the battle begin. Starbright, professional grade boat care products. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Kevin Jeffries and I are back to fishing on the North Key Largo, Florida Keys, shallow patch reefs. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I told George that uh, I wanted to uh, catch him a, a good hogfish while he was here on this trip, and, and uh, I was actually not really paying real close attention. I'd walked away from the rod to cut some bait, and, uh, and that rod bent over and took a little drag, and I, I honestly didn't expect it to be a hogfish. <laughs> it's a good fish, George. I know it's a good fish. You're doing a wonderful job with him, by the way. And now thinking back on it, I, I feel like he probably got ate by a, by a grouper uh, while we were fighting him. And uh, he came up scaled uh, pretty, pretty heavily. He was pretty beat up. As I thought about it more, I realized that, that that was the strongest five or six pound hogfish I've ever fought. Well, there was a reason why. There was, there was a grouper hanging on him. Just quit her. Start coming. Give me color here. Giant hog. Giant, giant hogfish, hog fish. George. Giant hogfish. Whoa. That's a monster. That's as, big, that's as big as they get out here, really. Like. We had what Kevin Jeffries had told me about on his patch reefs. We just landed a trophy class hogfish or hog snapper, as you will. What a remarkable fish. You ever seen a hogfish take drag like that, George? I, I thought you had a big mutton. <laughs> I did too. Oh, Kevin. Oh, this is what you set out for here, buddy. Would you look at I would have settled for the last one. Look at you scraped up. Look at how scraped he is. Running through the rocks and running through the sea fans trying to get away. Well, he hung you there. Yeah, he, uh, for a second, just for a brief second. Pulled him off a sea fan probably. Beat him up. Scaled himself. You don't have to scale himself. him. You're one yep. step closer to the flays. George, that is a beauty. That's that's a, You know what? That's a world-class hogfish, probably even in the Bahamas almost. You know, that's, that, that's a beauty. And the good thing about this, rod and reel. You don't walk up and pop up with a spear gun. No, no. No offense to you spear gun people out there, okay? So don't stop with the emails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They can be caught on hook and line. There it is. You just saw it. Whoa. What a hog. World-class hogfish. And we got a beautiful trophy class hog snapper. Could this day get any better? I'm sitting here looking at Kevin, and we had a very tough choice to make. We had some subs in the boat that we could take a lunch break. Or Alabama Jacks wasn't that far away. Yeah, Alabama Jacks is, uh, is, is a really unique uh, spot. Uh, pulled in there, tied up, went to go see Dog, who's a mainstay at Alabama Jacks, and sit down and treat not only Kevin, but our production team to a well-deserved lunch. So, uh, you know, there's no air conditioning, there's no, it's a, it's, it's a Florida spot. People come through there, tourists come through there. It's a place to get off the grid and, and uh, enjoy the 
the simpler things and uh, Alabama Jacks, that's, that's what it's all about. Fishing with Kevin Jeffries, the mad Canadian himself, just a pleasant guy to be around. He, he's an enjoyable guy, works hard, and has his specialty fishing dialed in. He wanted to showcase what he does with a lot of his charters, and that is fish the extreme shallow patries off North Key Largo. I, I, I kind of looked back on the trip and thought, you know, what, what, what have we done? What have I, what have I been able to show George? And, and I, I felt good about the fact that we were able to go in that shallow water and target so many species. And, uh, and, and you know be effective in catching them. Uh, felt really good about the fact that we, you know, we were actually able to catch a, a world-class hogfish for the show. But when you get hooked up with a guy as good as Kevin Jeffries, it's just a wonderful trip, fun guy to be around, great storyteller, and in between all the stories, he'll keep the rods bending. If you're looking to charter somebody in the Key Largo area, look him up, Captain Kevin Jeffries, AKA the Mad Canadian. For more detailed information on saltwater fishing, including how-to videos and features, visit my website, georgepovaromo.com. Also, to keep on top of my fishing excursions, visit me at Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash george.povaromo. And I'm also on Instagram at georgepovaromo. We'll see you there. <laughs>